to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, you Senator. Uh, Senator Gillian Van Turnout, and I understand you want to share your time. Yeah, in the spirit of equality well, and the subject just matter in question, uh, Senator Fiat McNeil and I have agreed to split the spokesperson time um, on this bill equally. Is, is this agreed? Is that agreed? <laughs> is it agreed? <laughs> is that agreed? I very much uh, welcome Senator Mary Henry to the House and I'd like to acknowledge the work that so many people have done to get us here to where we are today. Um, Senator McNeill's statement is going to focus on transparency and disclosure aspects of the bill, uh, which I wholeheartedly share. Um, my statement will focus on the gender quota dimension of the bill. And I'd like to commend the initiation of this bill by Minister Hogan, and I thank you for initiating it in this House and giving us the opportunity uh, to start the discussions. It is a strong bill, which you have outlined, Minister, uh, in your speech. And I need to also say, uh, and to start by saying, I'm not necessarily a cheerleader for gender quotas. And in fact, if anybody looks to my history, when I was president of the National Youth Council of Ireland, I lobbied hard for the removal of the gender quotas from the Council's constitution on the basis that it was no longer required. However, I do believe in quotas when necessary, and I believe the introduction of gender quotas for candidate selection is extremely necessary here. Women account for half the Irish population and yet were vastly underrepresented in the policy and decision-making process that shape all of our futures. This is not because women are disinterested. I know from my own personal experience with the Girl Guides, with civil society organisations, the passion and commitment of so, so many women and the vital role they play in shaping Ireland for the better. I think you just need to go into any town or community in Ireland and you will see this role very clearly demonstrated. The historic and persistent underrepresentation of women in Irish politics is problematic, both in the interests of democracy and from a human rights perspective. We recently celebrated the passage of 90 years since women in Ireland first won the right to vote and since the election of Countess Markovitz as the first female TD and MP elected. The intervening years have not boded well for gender parity representation in Irish politics. Ireland has one of the worst records of women's representations in national parliaments worldwide. We're currently 22nd out of 27 EU member states and 79th uh, in international rankings. Since the foundation of the state in 1918, Ordoyle has never had less than 85% male. As leader of an independent group of senators, I'm part of a group with 57% uh, female membership, and I don't think this has done us any harm. Uh, but this is an anomaly. Uh, out of a total of 1,620 Shannon seats filled between 1922 and 2009, only 9.3% have been by women. So I think it's fitting that the bill should be initiated in this House and that we're making the move towards balanced gender representation by way of affirmative action and the application of a legis legislative gender quota. For those who remain sceptical about the effectiveness of gender quotas, it should be noted that of the world's top 10 democratic parliaments in terms of representation of women, eight employ a gender quota. So, Minister, I have two concerns with respect to the bill before us. Um, are we missing an opportunity by not applying the gender quota to European and local elections? I need to put on the, uh, the state clearly that I agree fully with the 50-50 group and their contention that for quota legislation to be meaningful and to work, it must be extended to local government. By failing to do so, I believe we run the risk of making the same mistake as in France, where women who do not come from a political family are effectively excluded from entering local politics and thus gaining political legitimacy within their constituency. And secondly, I'm sure you agree, Minister, we must ensure that the gender quota is not just implemented in isolation. We must also encourage women to run for election. And in this regard, I'd like to commend the initiative of Women for Election, who endeavour to inspire, equip and inform women to run for political office and to provide tailored training and support programmes for interested women. Minister, I look forward to our debate today and through the different stages over the coming weeks to ensure that Ireland enters the ranks of the top ten democratic parliaments. And I now hand over to my colleague, Senator McNeill. Thank you, Senator. Senator Thank you. I presume I have five minutes, do I? We did 50-50. You have 50. actually six, if you want. Oh, six minutes, all right. 